In part A of the question, we need to determine the X and Y components of the soccer ball's change in momentum. Now, we can symbolize change in momentum as delta P with a little arrow above the P to indicate that momentum is a vector. And we can see that the change in momentum in this equation down here in the purple box is equal to the mass of the object multiplied by the final velocity minus the mass of the object multiplied by its initial velocity. So that's the equation that we're going to be using in part A of the question. Where we need to be careful though is that we need to separate the momentum into x and y components. So let us first examine the change in momentum in the x direction. And the question symbolizes that as delta p with a little subscript of x. So based on the equation that we just emphasized, that would be the, again, mass of the object. But this time, we would have to figure out the final velocity in the x direction only, minus the mass of the object multiplied by the initial velocity, again, in the x direction only. So to figure out the velocities in the x direction, we have drawn this picture over here in which we have the final velocity of the soccer ball at 20 meters per second, which is indicated in the question, and 32 degrees above the horizon. So we've shown that angle. And what we need to do is break this up into the x and y components. And to do that, you draw those components in first. So you would have an x component that points to the right, and then you have a y component that points straight up. And by drawing the components in that manner, you form a right triangle. So let's figure out what the final velocity in the x direction will be using a little bit of trigonometry. We can see that this is the adjacent side relative to the angle of 32 degrees. And then we can see that the final velocity itself is the hypotenuse. Of course, the trig function that relates adjacent and hypotenuse is the cosine function. So we have the cosine of the 32 degree angle is equal to the adjacent side, which is the final velocity in the x direction, over the hypotenuse, which has a value of 20 meters per second. So if we multiply both sides of this equation by 20 meters per second, then the 20 would cancel on the right side and then we can see that the left side is 20 cosine of 32 degrees. That is your final velocity in the x direction. As for the initial velocity in the x direction, we return to the question, and it says that the ball was initially stationary. So that means that the final velocity, excuse me, that means that the initial velocity in the x direction is actually zero meters per second. So we are now ready to calculate the change in momentum in the x direction. We will return to the calculation here. We're going to take the mass of the soccer ball, which was stated as 0.425 kilograms, multiplied by the final velocity in the x direction, which we just figured out was 20 cosine of 32 degrees, minus the mass of the soccer ball again, times the initial velocity in the x direction, which was zero. So this term here will zero out. You can pick up your calculator now and punch this in. Just make sure that your calculator is set to degree mode. When you do this, you're going to get 7.21, and this unit of momentum change will be kilograms times, well, let's see, this was a velocity, so this was meters per second. So it's gonna be kilograms times meters per second. And this would be the correct answer for the change in momentum in the x direction. We also needed the change in momentum in the y direction which means we're going to take the mass and multiply it by the final velocity in the y direction minus the mass multiplied by the final velocity, excuse me, the initial velocity, I'll get it together eventually, in the y direction. Now remember the ball was initially stationary, so the initial velocity in the y direction was also zero. This is going to zero out. Let's go back to our picture and get the final velocity for the y direction. We can see that that would be this velocity right here that is the side opposite to the angle. So we're gonna be using opposite and hypotenuse. That is the sine function. We'll come down here. We'll say that the sine of the 32 degree angle is equal to the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse, which is the 20 meters per second. Again, multiply both sides of this little equation by 20. You will see that 20 times the sine of 32 is equal to the final velocity in the y direction. That will be in meters per second. So returning to our calculation over here, we'll do the change in momentum in the y direction is equal to the mass multiplied by the final velocity in the y direction, which is the 20 meters per second times the sine 
of the 32 degree angle. And when you punch this into your calculator, you will end up with 4.50. And again, it's kilograms times meters per second. So this is the correct answer for the change in momentum of the y direction. That completes part A. We'll go back up to the question. In part B, we need the average force exerted by the player's foot on the ball. Now, we can see from the equation that used to have a purple box on it that the average force multiplied by a time interval is equal to the change in momentum. So we're going to be able to use this equation since we have the change in momenta for the x and y direction, and we also have the time interval right over here. Where you need to be very careful, however, is figuring out what this overall change in momentum is, because right now we just have the x and y components. So let's talk about the overall change in momentum. We know that for the x direction, the change in momentum was the 7.21, and then for the y direction, the change in momentum was the 4.50. To use the equation cited above, which again was the force times the time interval is equal to the change in momentum, we need the overall change in momentum. That overall change in momentum would be this vector right here. This is known as the resultant of this little right triangle. We can label that delta P. And to find that delta P, since this is a right triangle, we could use Pythagorean theorem. So we would have delta P squared, which is the hypotenuse squared, is equal to delta PX squared plus delta PY squared. So this is just an application of the Pythagorean theorem. We will go ahead and square root both sides. So you'll actually have the big square root of delta PX squared plus delta PY squared. Go ahead and plug in the numbers that we obtained for delta px and delta py, so that was the 7.21 squared plus the 4.5 squared. And when you punch this in, let's see what we get. We will get a change in momentum of about 8.5. So this is the change in momentum that you're going to use in the equation of calculating force. So one more time, that equation for calculating force was the force times the time interval is equal to the overall change in momentum. Let's divide both sides by the time interval here. So then we can see that the average force is the change in momentum divided by the change in the time. We've got the overall change in momentum from the previous calculation. And then we'll divide that by the given time interval, which was the 4.4 times 10 to the minus two seconds. And when you punch this into your calculator, you're going to get about 193 newtons for the average force. So this would be the correct answer to part B.